This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, today is Wednesday, November 10th. It'll be a few days probably before you see this, but uh, today's the 10th. So in the last two and a half weeks since the previous turtle test ride video, a lot has changed. Wait, let me back up a bit. Why has a lot changed? Fair question. What you didn't see in the last video was that turtle tipped over twice on what looked like fairly level ground. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a surprise. Once was one. in the middle of the county road, which if you ever see the roads here, Ouch. maybe that isn't so much of a surprise I after all. Anyway, there were some serious problems I had to fix before going forward. So far I like it. It's not as easy as I was thinking it was going to be. I could also explain the welding situation. I'm using a MIG welder, but with the wind, shielding gas is kind of useless, so I use flux core wire. I feel comfortable welding the scrap steel I harvested from the school bus seat frames, but from my research, MIG welding bicycle frames sounded like it was beyond my skills. When I googled the subject, almost every website I saw said TIG or brazing, do not MIG weld. I won't go into the details, but if you are curious, check it out. Some very interesting reading. If anyone wants to sponsor me a TIG welder and a welding table and a shop to keep the shielding gas from blowing away, that would be great. But in the meantime, I'll stick with what I have. I'm almost done this one. Well, I am not setting any records today, but we're making it. Holy hell. Two cliff bars just to get to here. Because Turtle is built out of donated bike frames and parts, nothing matches. There are a few parts that are kind of close, but mostly not. The two BMX bikes I'm using for the front steering heads are pretty different shape, actually. So what was happening was the two front wheels were not level to each other. That meant that turtle was already tilted to one side, and the wheels were not in alignment to each other. To make it worse, when I put the rear wheel on, I was looking at the front for a lineup, which was crooked. So I put the rear wheel on tilted also. Plus, I didn't get the front wheels aligned to each other very well. So there was a lot of drag from that. End result was it tipped over, and was pretty hard to pedal too. It took me about twice as long as it should have for that ride. On the plus side, however, the pedaling itself seemed to work well. I had some chain misalignment issues, but overall, pedaling worked way better than it did on the Blue Bike Electric Trike project. So I set the two BMX bikes wider by about 6 inches on each side, and also pushed them back about 6 inches, and then rebuilt all the brackets so they are much closer to being straight to each other. In all fairness, none of Turtle is actually very straight, but it is much better than it was two or three weeks ago. While I was redoing the whole front end, I also swapped out the 20 inch front wheels and BMX forks and put the front forks from two of the mountain bikes and also the two electric motor front wheels that were on the blue bike and the black bike. That was a bit of commitment there taking apart the two working electric bikes to build Turtle, but I figured I could always swap them back if I really had to. I also cut off the pedal boom and welded it back on straighter, which really helped the chain to be straight. I redid the chain derailleur on the front on the pedal boom, and that is working much better. I forget when I added the other chain idler, but that helped a lot too. I still have to add some chain guides. Sometimes the chains come off, but not very often. It's good enough for testing. The rear wheel is now not tilted to one side, so it even looks kind of straight. The seat stayed the same. It was in the right place. It was just that everything else was wrong. Once I had things level and kind of straight, 
The next part was figuring out how to make steering linkage for the two front wheels. I think it's called Ackerman or something. Anyway, the idea is when you turn, like in your car, the inside wheel turns further than the outside wheel. I might release a video about that, but I'm not really the expert on that, so maybe not. I did manage to get to the point it doesn't scrub too much when I turn. Close enough for now. I also made some nice adjustable steering linkage tie rod things. So once I had turtle to where it could turn, I also now have it so it will go straight. Wow, does that make a difference? I can ride one-handed and it doesn't tip over. And okay, get this, it can coast. Before, it was snow plowing. Some days it was toe in, some days toe out. And if I stopped pedaling, it stopped rolling all on its own. Now that it will coast, I have to work on the brakes, I guess. Anyway, that's it for now. The next video, I'll be hooking up all the electrics and probably the first solar panel tests. All right, we restocked and reloaded again. Thanks to David for the ride. We went to El Paso. I haven't been to El Paso maybe once since I sold the truck a year and a half ago. So I was kind of going through my mental list and I'm like, okay, all the things that are too heavy that I don't want to carry on the bicycle. So 20 pounds of beans, 20 pounds of rice, another thing, coffee, peanut butters, lots of cans. Oh, pizza, 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 pizza. Cliff bars, more coffee. Eggs, I got eggs. And frozen burritos, so I'll eat those first. Yeah, we'll be living the good life, so I got the freezer plugged in again. Thanks to everybody for the the recent donations and everything. That helped a lot. That looks better. Bread, taters, apples... Pancake mix. Now we're ready. Not carried on bicycle. Yay! The 7th of October. David and I ran into town. So I got a bunch of stuff where it's all stocked up. I bought a bunch of beans and rice and cliff bars and cans of food. And so we're set there. The other thing. Now, I made a big deal I was going to turn off the internets, and I will, but I haven't yet. Just before I turned everything off, I got to thinking about it. The Chromebook is a laptop that would be really handy to take to the library. And so, so I figured I'd set that up. So I started that last night, uh, just doing a little bit more setup on it now. Yeah, anyway, so when that's done, then I'll shut the internet off. Uh, it's a couple days after I thought I was going to. Figured it was only fair if I showed you the empty containers of beans and rice. I'll show you that thanks to all your wonderful support, I was able to go out and buy more beans and rice and a bunch of other stuff. So we restocked. So, yay! Save your coffee containers. They work great for canisters. David brought me some cool buckets with the screw-on lid. This will last me a while. That should keep us for a while. So, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Fred. Um, got this box in the mail, and I was like, why is this one so heavy? I was expecting some other stuff, and I'm like, get it home. Oh, it's a care package. Yay. Anyway, uh, I think it's Fred, the... Uh, postal label got put over top of the address label so I, it looks like it says Fred from I think California by the zip code so thank you very much we got beans we got more beans uh, Ricola that's uh, cough drops I think some soups and some tomato sauces a bunch of tuna this one I had to look twice it's like okay, it's a bunch of paper clips safety pins other clips and alligator clips so 
all things that you need on the road. Very cool, thank you very much. And another dry erase marker, another dry erase marker. Oh, microwave's going off. Time for time for supper. Pencil and a pen. Always good stuff. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, my internet is off for right now, so I will get this and other videos uploaded as soon as possible. Might be a while. So just know that uh, I got it and thinking of you. Uh, today is... 13th of October and this package probably got here on the 9th so I don't always go in to check mail if I don't think I have anything coming so it's been here for a few days at least all right thank you very much stay tuned and here we are right? so these are similar I don't know how exact I've never put them side by side but they do have a pretty similar shape. You might work. A little bit of drag in there. Right. Does that help? Just after 6 p.m. on the 29th. It's already cooling down to 70 out here. I think it's cooler than 70 actually. Sun's already down. Kind of see the bright spot there. Should be where it went down. If I look at my sundial. This one is due west. It's way over here already. And this one should be winter. So we're about halfway in between. Anywho, if you didn't have solar, you'd never worry about that. I don't think I did any video today at all. I was kind of cranky, so I just didn't do it. So the project for today This is almost a foot wider than it was on the test ride This front curled brace here is actually cut off. It was a little further forward It used to go to this hole to there. So that's how much wider we are It was also further forward a few inches so it's going to get moved um, 
the rear brace I cut it in half and added an extension on each end I was going to go straight across but that totally would have fouled the center section here so I welded kind of an L bracket here that this bolt can pick up this bolt goes through the main chassis I think that's going to be strong enough I'm having second thoughts though because it's so much wider in here and these are U-channels so I'm kind of scared they're going to twist or bend or something. So we'll see what happens there. So I was just kind of thinking about it tonight, and I wanted to have sort of an idea before I come out here in the morning. I hate starting the day with not any idea, right? So I picked up some of these, which actually look like they would work really good for that. Okay. So if I do one off of this front chassis here, to there it's almost where the hole was last time so I could take that plate off and move it so basically I take this plate cut it off weld it onto this piece this could be the dawn of a new era this little electric heater pulls a little bit less than 300 watts I checked it with the kilowatt when I first bought it I think it's 275 or something like that it doesn't it, it draws less power than the coffee maker does okay I moved my lithium batteries inside because you're not supposed to run a lithium battery colder than about 40 degrees or something like that so I thought rather than insulating or heating my battery box why don't I just bring the battery inside and then if it is that cold I'll run a heater in here to warm it up okay so evening I go outside I shut off the outside inverter which is off the main system and I switch over to the inside system off of the lithium battery. So pretty much from about sundown I'll go out and do it because I don't like walking around outside in the dark so I go out there before it's dark shut off the outside system and then I run off of the inside system. Is plenty of power to run my laptop for three or four hours into the evening and then the first couple hours in the morning I got up at six laptop running the phone charger going uh, I made coffee, I made oatmeal, boiled water for oatmeal, and I got leftover power. I'm like, well, okay, let me just try out this little heater. I've also got another heater that pulls like 750 watts, but I don't think that would last very long, you know. But this, it's it's perfect. It just sits there, it just shines heat on you. And man, does that feel good. It, it was 53 degrees this morning in here when I woke up, so it's not cold like it's going to be. But this is the first year I've had the, the house part of the, like the, the front part where I live, I've got the insulation up now. So it's it's gonna be a lot more comfortable than it has been, okay. But if I could sit here for an hour in the morning, drink my coffee, eat my oatmeal, and have that little heater running, okay. And then during the day, I'll just recharge the battery. That's the whole idea of solar anyway. Yeah, electric heat, that's not a big deal, but if you can run an electric heat off of a lithium battery off a solar system, net cost is zero. You know, I've already got the capacity. So now it's a matter of how much can I run it as much. So maybe my propane would last longer. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. It's like I've got a lot of solar panels on the main system, so I can run everything I need off of the main system during the day. Just one more little thing, right? Now what I had done a couple days ago, just kind of experimenting, I, I set the level on the top of the wheel. before it was really narrow you really couldn't get between at all lots of braces just put our feet up and chill for a minute there have been so many times that I would 
way before I got this far, I had the pedals kind of sitting there, and I would just come out and feel it. You know, just sit on it and pretend. Wonder what it would be like. Okay, actually, this is what I was wondering about. With them way back here, I could have handles right there. That's actually really good. So that eliminates all of this, basically. Which makes it interesting. Yeah, that's how much I got rid of is just chop that off. So now that I've cut these off, <laughs> and I've cut off two of them, I wonder how many handlebars I've got left now. Yeah. on backwards even, which would make some sense, which is completely loose so it almost fell off. So we're about three gears off. Okay, by now you know the drill. I got brakes and I got shifting. something I remember thinking about but I forgot to check. I think I'm really toe in right now on the front alignment. So let's see if we can figure that out. After some investigation, right? I'm not sure what is shifting, but something is shifting. That's all I know for sure. Because I can actually snow plow from the handlebars. I can push or I can pull it. I can change my toe a little bit. And I can't figure out where it's coming from yet. Quitting time is 4.30 on the 2nd of November. So those will connect to the axle nuts and go back. And then about 8 inches back from the axle on the inboard side is where the tie rod will come off and come to the middle. But I'm not going to put that on because... Ah, uh, reasons, let me think. I haven't invented the middle part yet. Yeah, that's what it is. So the middle part is where I'm going to do that multi-link setup so that I can get the steering to work right in the corners. And then from that, I'll work on getting everything as straight as I can when it's going straight, make a mark somewhere, and then set my alignment so that it goes straight. And then I can start testing to see if it turns right. Yeah! Okay. Oh. Here's my reference. <coughs> Ooh, I've had that going all day. This is what we did on the inside a couple days ago. The idea being if one wheel is turned on the inside, it turns sharper 
and the one on the outside isn't as sharp. And that is made up by this link in between. The distance between here seems to make the most difference. So I tested the concept. It works on here, on this thing. Uh, I'm not going to scale it up. I'm just going to mock it up on the bicycle and then test it. It's the fourth, fourth of the day, pretty sure. It's almost noon, a few minutes before. This always starts off simple. This end is going to attach to where the axle is on the front wheels. This goes around behind the wheels. I'm calling these my fender hoops. Tie rod will go between the two brackets. So when one wheel turns, it pulls the other wheel, okay? Now, here's the problem. The steering, or the, the pedal boom in the front, which has now been completely disassembled, is crooked. I've known it was crooked and I kind of could see it was crooked. It's definitely going to this side. Ignore the wheels because they're disconnected. So, depending how I measure, my center point is never quite right. That's just going all the way through the whole project. But I don't want to change it too much because there's parts that work already. So I'm just trying to bump it a little bit without completely scrapping it. Yeah. But on the plus side, now I know this is important, so I'll try to get it a little bit better this time. Yeah, do it right. That's a clever shortcut the first time, but here we are. Anyway, I'm going to take a lunch break, then I'll come back and finish this. I did a test ride, though. Steering's still a little bit off, but that's fine. I just, uh, what I ended up doing, so it's got the new uh, hoops on installed. And I welded the brackets on, and then I shortened up my tie rod between the two brackets. And that's just a starting point, okay? So this is just a placeholder until I get the center link figured out. Also, uh, I think it was on the other one, but I ended up cutting the pedal boom completely off and taking this off of the pedal boom and doing some tweaks and changes and stuff. So that's welded on straighter than it was. Added bonus there, now my chain runs pretty true. This is on the lower sprocket and it still runs pretty true. The problem had been, one of the problems, it was far enough off that this sprocket set here wouldn't keep the chain in. It kept falling off, okay? Because it was, you know, it was off quite a bit. So now it's a lot closer. Yay, okay. Okay, 8.45 on the 5th of November. It was cold this morning. It was about 40 when I first looked out about sunrise. Feels good in the sun though. It's cold inside, so. Oh, hell yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm using this newfangled thing to figure out my angle here. I want to not rub on that. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little bit of an air gap between the two. So I'm trying to get this and the other side consistent angle, but this isn't the same. So what I'm going to do is build a piece that will fit into here. And it'll just be a short piece of metal that I think I can put in there. And then probably a hose clamp will go around it, unless I can think of something easier. But I think the hose clamp is probably the simplest thing. There's not going to be very much force on it. It just needs to... The the piece that I put in, there's going to be a short piece of metal that'll brace up, kind of like a... We'll just make a, a cheese wedge kind of thing. And it'll press up against here. So when I hit the brakes, the brake... Uh, caliper is actually going to be attached to this on the bottom side on the other side where the brake is because this is in the way of where I would have wanted to put the brakes yeah hopefully that works all right here we go Okay, it's about 1 p.m. same day. Got the bracket made. 
very much to it, but the important parts are there. I cut the middle out so that it would sit flat. Uh, the actual weld contact is going to be about this much. And if I check it, the, what I got to remember is when I weld it to pull it back just a little bit so that it clears so that it doesn't rub up against the edge of the disc, basically. So. See if they work later. I'm not going to hook the cables up today. time. Try it again tomorrow. Okay, first version. Ready for testing. It is doing what we're expecting. Oh, I see the, the middle part shifted also. Okay, I made a little tweak to the design. One of the things I was seeing, okay, I need this piece to stay perpendicular to this piece. And I couldn't get this tight enough to where it wanted to stay. When I get to the final version, this will be a welded piece. So I just added these diagonals and they're at 45 degrees. And so the hole is lined up, uh, trigonometry or something. Wait, no, they're not either. I thought they were two and two. That would have made more sense. Anyway, so, I just picked holes that lined up that keeps this nice and square so that it won't move and then playing around with the linkages a little bit I moved the tie rod to the end of the link instead of to the middle and what that did is just because of this diagonal line it gave me about a half a hole space more or less and it seems like we're straighter okay more or less I'm definitely on to something. I'm not quite there yet. It seems to definitely be a factor of a ratio between the center, the length and the width of the center pivot. I can make the turn. I can feel it's still scrubbing, so I need a little bit more. It looks like a little bit more on the inside wheel, but it's basically working. That'll be fine. Okay, 2.30 on the 9th. 
I didn't get an epic start today and when you, it's it's very frustrating some days. I'll look at the little pile of parts that I've created and I'm like, that took me all day. <laughs> okay, thinking of an idea and then finding in the scrap pile a part that looks sort of like it. So the red magnets are on the tie rods. I'm welding a nut into the end of the conduit and then this will thread into the nut. That's my clevis, so I'm going to weld that bolt into the end. Just kind of run it along there. Welder, grinders, generators. Put the bike away, put all the tools away. Oh, and a drill press. <sighs> there are days I look at what I built and I'm like, a lot of what I built I need. I just need more, I guess. I just need, it would be so nice to shut the lights off and close the door on the shop and leave all these things basically where they are. I mean, I'd pick it up a little bit, right? All right, that's it for today. Tomorrow we do the alignment and start test writing. That's pretty exciting. Okay, it's about 8.30. Let me figure out which way the wind is going. It's about 8.30 on the 10th. I'm basically finished the building part of the bicycle itself, not counting the electrics and the solar and all that stuff. So as it is now, it's a rolling platform. Okay, that's the first time I could say that. The basics work. It's kind of cool. Uh, when I put the steering together yesterday, I did a quick test ride and it seems like it's working. I figure I'm going to go one more time to the dumpster and see if all of the improvements have made it any better. It should be better. So that's the that's the plan. We'll just go out and do one more test ride, pedal only, make sure it's working. If that seems like it's working, I think I'll put the electrics on then. Because I already know I can pedal the bicycle to town and back without the electrics. Okay, and I know that the electrics have gone to town and back on the bicycle, but this is going to be a little bit heavier and a little more rolling resistance, so it's going to take more power. Just in case this does work. There's definitely something in there because we should be able to see through that. be uncomfortable just randomly it's like I, I grabbed a new hat a while ago oh no he's gonna go hide in the other one hey right. yeah he doesn't want to be out in the daylight yeah so I grab a, a hat I haven't worn for a while last week I guess and I'm working along and pretty soon I can feel the spiders crawling around in the hat so I hadn't looked far you know, deep enough I'm like seriously yeah, the wolf spiders are good. They're not, apparently they're not poisonous. So we'll go with that. When I did the Alaska trip on the KLR, I used a lot of uh, standard Imperial hardware because it was easier to find in the hardware store. 
by you know putting a, a washer on the head side, a flat washer, the lock washer, and the nut, I don't think I had any of my Imperial hardware from the hardware store come loose on that entire ride. And I had several of the OEM bolts rattle loose, right? So as long as you get a good lock washer on there, you don't have to use um, like self-locking nuts typically as long as you get them just snug them up good I, and you don't have to kill them either they seem to work just fine so yeah kind of cool really doesn't weigh that much I mean it's it's heavier than a bicycle but it's not you know it wouldn't be difficult to load into the back of a truck kind of thing it'd be awkward because it's big over the roar of the wind. So I've got these padded uh, P-clamps, I guess is one of the words for them. You could use them to hang pipes or wire bundles or something. All right. So you, the idea is they come in the right size. So I took the padding off of one of them and it just happens to be the same size as the uh, hose clamp. So in this case, I. The hose clamps I had weren't long enough, so I ended up having to do two later on. I probably, well, I'm gonna run this for a while and just see. If this works, I'll just get a longer hose clamp. If it doesn't work, I'll come up with a different idea, but I put the pad in so that I don't scratch up the forks. There's not much tension on here. It's just enough so that this can't droop. That's all we gotta deal, do with. All right, now the testing begins. Way ahead of the curve today, though. I'm really confused. My tracks don't look like they're scrubbing, <laughs> which is, I guess, good. I only turned it a few turns on the adjustment. It's really close right now. Now it's a little deceptive because we got a significant uh, tailwind still going that way. So I'm tailwind and down the hill. But it's about the first time it's really coasted. It's always had a little bit of drag and all of a sudden it just takes off. So that's pretty cool. I think I will take it down to the county road and just kind of run around a little bit. Yeah. Duck out of the wind here. Check. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, this is kind of an unusual surprise. All of a sudden, I mean, just literally one or two adjustments, and I got the toe in, toe out dialed. All of a sudden, you could just feel it was almost like as if you had a tailwind even before the tailwind. It just started rolling really easy so wow right and now that I've got the bottom brackets locked with those bolts that I drilled in the bottoms that uh, should keep it from drifting um, I put a few washers in places to keep things from binding uh, then I was able to tighten up some of the pivot points a little more so that they are less sloppy I'm um, still getting a little bit of flutter 
at the wheels. Uh, With what I've got, that's about the best I can do. I think what I could do though later is like drill the hole oversized and then put a bushing in there. That could dampen that out. But it's not, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal compared to some of the other problems I've dealt with. I wanted to pedal to town a few times before I did anything with the electrics. Which in, in theory kind of made sense because I wanted to make sure the bike itself worked and was stable and didn't give me any trouble before I add the electrics. One of the things that I'm realizing just riding this around, yes, it does roll pretty good and it does coast pretty good, but it is obviously going to be significantly heavier than a regular bicycle. Just around here, I'm still in first gear. So coming up the hill, I was pedaling pretty fast because I was geared way down. That still is working better than it ever has. So that's promising. But I'm kind of thinking maybe it makes sense to go ahead and start putting the electrics on sooner. I guess the next step though, well I mean I've got to, I've got the motors on there, but I've got to hook up motor controllers, uh, pedal assist sensor, try to get both motor controllers to work with one sensor. I think that's not going to be too hard, but I don't know. Um, so it's going to be one battery, two motors and controllers probably one throttle at least for testing i think if i had a switch that could say left motor right motor both motors off right so that i could just run one motor at a time if i wanted to i'm not sure if there's an advantage to that because they're both there but if i decide i have a problem with one i could just shut one off and use the other one I think it would be really complicated having two separate throttles. That would be confusing. It would be great for turning though, it would be like a boat. You'd just you know, hit the outside throttle and it would just turn around. We might look into that later. Also, I'm going to have left and right brakes so I can do turning brakes when we get there. But I think for today, I'm going to take it out to the county road and go up and down the road a few times so I can go a little bit further than just to the end of the driveway because you don't even get a cadence going really. Maybe just play around with it for a while. It's never been this good, is is what I'm thinking. It's uh, it's never been this good. You know, every time I would take turtle outside of the driveway, it would break. You know, the first one when I was working with that other motor and trying to get all those wheels to work and everything, and I kept breaking parts. Where this mechanically seems a hundred times better so far. And every time I'd look at something, I'm like, okay, can I make this any better? And I think it's it's about as good as I can make right now. So I, I don't see any major improvements that I can do. There's a couple things. Uh, the middle sprocket is still crooked. I can work on that, but it works. So I'm kind of like, well, let's stay with it for now. And I'm just trying to like, okay, when I get it to this point, now I can start road testing it and I could spend, you know, one day go on a long ride and if it works, great. Next day I could work on some of the little details. Uh, eventually I'm going to have to paint it, but I don't want to paint it yet because if I decide to do any more welding, I got to grind all the paint off. So that's why I'm, I'm reluctant to do any painting yet. But eventually I will because it's it's all made out of rusty metal. so. You know, which will be hard because I'll have to then take it at least at least partially apart. Well, I might just brush it, you know, and there's some things that, you know, the insides of the U-channels I can't get into anyway. So, you know, maybe I'll just use something like trim clad, which is, you know, for rusty metal, you know, and just wire brush it to clean it up a little bit and uh, paint it on and, you know, get a couple of years out of it anyway and then by then we'll go get a nice one but yeah all of a sudden it just like okay it was like a it was like an it was like i was riding with the parking brake on and then i just shut it off and then it started working it's kind of what it feels like it's it's a lot lot better all right pick up the tools go for a little ride this is pretty cool Hopefully I, I keep the smile on the rest of my face the rest of the day.
All right, stay tuned. Anyway, that's it for now. The next video, I'll be hooking up all the electrics and probably the first solar panel tests. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.